From America's Next Top Model to America's Next Top Novel, J. Manuel served as creative director on the hit reality show for 18 seasons. Now he's written a juicy new book inspired by his experience, and it's already getting tons of buzz. Hi, Jay. So good to see you. Hey, Sarah. I'm, it's good to see you as well. I mean, it's so weird now. The world is all about Zoom, right? I know, I know. Thank God for Zoom, though, now, because now I get to see your beautiful face. I miss <laughs> you. Um, and if we have to do it this way, I'll take it. But let's okay. talk about this book. So this book is being described as meta fiction. So kind of set it up for us. Tell us about the concept. I kind of broke con literary convention. I blur lines. I break the fourth wall in an effort to kind of jolt the reader out into their own world and and really examine the relationships they have around themselves because this book ultimately is a character piece. It's, it's, it has a great group of characters and I wanted to explore some pretty, you know, heavy themes that we see throughout society today and also within the entertainment industry, you know, like the cost of fame and then also, you know, looking at the entertainment industries kind of often kind of abuse of power within the industry, but also we can extrapolate that into you know, everyday life and how do we look at, you know, power dynamics in the workplace to also, you know, looking at intersectionality within the entertainment industry and black women's identity. And so these are big topics we're talking about in 2020. I wrote this book a while ago. I didn't expect it would all kind of come together right now. And yeah, that it, 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 the story is told through satire. So it's really a lot of fun. It's meant to really make you laugh, uh, but it does also make you think a little bit. Yeah, so um, they say, write what you know. Uh, yes. So are there, you know, real life stories in here, a little behind the scenes moments maybe that could be true? <laughs> well, so it is fiction, yes. So it is It is the whole story. It's just this wonderful fictional arc. That's a, it's a lot of fun. It's meant to be, it's a very fast paced book, a very fast read. It's meant to feel a little relentless because the world behind the scenes of reality TV is relentless. Yeah. Um, but in terms of what's truth and what's not, you know, for fans of the show, there are these big recognizable Easter eggs baked throughout the story. But of course, the fictional tale around it is kind of telling a different story around it, which is fun to play with. But, you know, the protagonist, whose name is Pablo Michaels, you know, people think it's supposed to be me. He really isn't me because I was exploring all these different themes. But there's a lot of me in him and, and a lot of the characters, really, because I'm I wrote the book. And one of the things I did share, which was something very vulnerable, was my own story around um, my adoption, because a lot of people don't know that I was adopted. And the whole piece is an identity piece. So I did weave some of that into the book, which is a part of the story that people don't know about me. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, the book is called The Wig, The Bee, and The Meltdown. Mm -hmm. um, so the meltdown, a lot of people are saying that it's kind of in reference to the we were all rooting for you moment. Is that true? So there is a chapter called The Meltdown, and um, it is absolutely inspired by that famous kind of judging sequence, although there's a completely different story going on around it. So I used it again as inspiration. This book is coming out at a time when the show is back in the spotlight for not some, you know, not so great things, for some problematic mm -hmm. moments. Have you gone back and kind of revisited episodes or watched it at all, or do you kind of just let it, leave it alone? You know, I had not watched it in, oh my gosh, like years and years and years and years. I mean, I just kind of moved on and had a whole career beyond the show. Um, but with no one expected this pandemic, of course, and then people were yearning for nostalgia. So you had, you know, it became a top binge watch show on several streamers. Then you had this whole new audience tuning in, looking at it through a completely different lens. Yeah. yeah. So, um, I, you know, I started to watch some of the episodes because every Friday I do like a Jay's chat where I break down a different season with a different co-host from someone on the show. And we kind of now talk very openly and honestly about our experiences behind the scenes. And, you know, ultimately it became a global phenomenon and something that I'll always cherish being a part of, you know, it was a big part of my life and career. I have one more thing to bring up because uh, this has been coming up lately too, is the smize. 
Mm -hmm. because people are all wearing masks. So to smile, <laughs> with your mask on, what's the key, Jay? What's, give me some tips. The whole thing is about having intensity in your eyes, right? So squinting a little helps. Also, it's having a real thought and an intention in your, in your mind. So I always, like a good kind of test is, you know, um, you know, if you ever walked into the room and you see like a crush across the room, everyone naturally does that. They look and they you know, get that excitement. So that's really the trick is bringing some life to your eyes. All right. We got tips today. We got a great book to read. Jay, it's been so great catching up with you. And we want to let everyone know that the book is out now. Please pick up a copy. Jay, thanks so much, my dear. Thanks, Sarah. It was great seeing you.